Welcome back, folks. Appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 45, NASDAQ off 11, S&Ps off 8.5. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Kegstad, as we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at Forex dash trading dash unlock com that's forex dash trading dash unlock com teddy cake stack what's going on brother hey guys ready to talk about the currencies we're ready man you know I, i'll tell you that <laughs> i i can't wait because you know silver start moving like an explosive move yesterday and the currencies really are not moving that much and, and you get a follow through today it's like okay man someone's buying that hand over fist but let's start with the currencies where do you want to start well, I think uh, we have a bit of divergence that's starting to uh, settle into the market here. We have, uh, over the past few months, we've seen basically the major currency crosses trade against the dollar in tandem, if you will. Um, the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar were the ones that were kind of going opposite of the majors against the dollar. Okay. Um, as a whole, uh, our euro US dollar has been basically in a range trade for five, six months now. And even though it looks kind of nice on a chart, the ranges have been super, super tight. Yes. Um, now, we have heard a lot of rumblings about trying to weaken the dollar to help bolster the uh, U.S. economy and what have you. We know that uh, the Fed chairman spoke last week and was just more of the same when he spoke to the House and the Senate. Now, tomorrow and Friday, we have uh, Fed speeches coming up from other members of the Fed. Okay. But you're going to have a, just a reiteration of what the Fed chairman spoke about last week. Uh, what will be interesting is if there's any talk about what's going on with the UK, um, because the pound is obviously one of the biggest weights in the dollar index, and where the euro has basically been going nowhere for months, the pound is really, really hitting new lows. It hit uh, two-year lows uh, yesterday and today, and I think that you have to really wonder what's going to happen here with this currency. Like, there is a lot of weakness for many reasons because of the UK economy. Now you have EU saying that uh, it's too hasty of, a, of an exit uh, that they're pushing for right now, which how can it be hasty when they've been dealing it for two years now, even though it's a few months away where they're trying to get this target date. Yeah, so that, that's quite a move, said, huh? Interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's a big move. And I think that being said is that now we're going to start to see where, you know, the dollar index has been a great way of trying to gauge your forex currency crosses like the euro, the pound, and the yen, and what have you. Yeah. In, overall trends. Um, however, now I think we're going to have a period where if the pound continues to maintain this bear trend, which I think it's very likely that it will, um, dollar weakness is not going to lift the pound. It's not going to be the water that's going to lift the boat. You know what I mean? Yes. So the euro, we might now see like a lot of divergent opportunities over the next couple months. Um, meaning that the euro US dollar could see uh, not necessarily a major rally, but maybe lift its range up to that 114 to 116, maybe even pressuring the 119 area. Um, that would be if dollar weakness starts to come into play, which would mean Fed cuts rates in the next meeting, what have you, you know, these are things that we've been talking about. Right. But I don't think that's gonna happen with the pound. I think there's gonna be a complete differential there um, where it's just gonna maintain its bearish move. And then we're gonna start to see some really good trading opportunities um, between these different cross rates. Um, now, like we, I've been saying how the, the Euro US dollar is going sideways. Tommy, I know you like the, and Tom, I know you like the yen and stuff, especially with trying to gauge the gold trade. Yes. Um, I think that the, with dollar weakness coming in, um, perhaps that that might start to get a move. But the yen, I think, is kind of trapped like the Euro US dollar. Right. I don't think you see any major breakouts with them. Um, but now your crosses with, say, the yen pound or the euro pound or even just the pound dollar, that's where I think the trend is going to start to really weigh on the pound for a while until we start to see something come out of the UK and change things. Boy, you know, there's so much you have to know about the currency market, man. It's pretty wild, man. You know, that's the, I, I love how you put this together, Teddy, you know, because... The dollar well, index, I, this is the thing I'm talking about with you guys today is that we usually look at that as a guide. Yes. I think that's going to be something we can't use as a guide now for the next three to four months. No, which is so, so cool. I'm glad you're teaching us about the other crosses. I get it. I, I get it. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm going to have to start wrapping my head around it. Because let me tell you, man, I was, you know, the silver market has been so far behind the gold market. I mean, in a big way. 
And then all of a sudden, yesterday, man, they're coming in hand over fist, not only just in the commodity, they're coming in on every one of those silver equities. They're blowing away swing points. They have volume behind the move. And it's like, okay, I, so I suspect, and that's what I'll start hunting, it has to do with the uh, different cross rates that you're talking about, not what I'm not normally looking at. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I, I do. In fact, I got a question for you. Um, being that gold and silver are making the moves, and this comes into this point where when you have divergence of currencies, this starts to trickle into other markets. Like, we already know the interest rate variable, it's solid. There's not a question. We don't need to right. try and forecast that for months. Um, but now as far as valuations, like with these trade deals and what do the ramifications mean, what about oil? Let's say that oil, like the oil number that comes out uh, this week, the, uh, the EIA number, yep. it's a very big deal. And, you know, if, I mean, if it's bullish, let's say, and what if we have oil back up at 70, 75 bucks a barrel in two, three months? What does that mean for gold? What does that mean for the dollar? It means that overall we're going to see some major, major swings come September and October. Yeah, and well, with, with oil, it seems like, you know, we had a drawdown today and they're still selling it down. So it looks like oil's having a hard time going past 60 bucks. Now, that being mm -hmm. said, though, what I've watched, okay, which I follow, you know, a lot just in general because I follow some of these stocks, iron ore has taken off, like, beyond belief, folks. Iron ore just went from 450 a ton up to 850 a ton, okay? So, and the reason that, and, and just what I've seen is that when you get a real commodity run, that's what normally starts happening. Do you know what I mean? You get a couple of these anomalies that just take off. Like, wow, man, okay. That just thing almost doubled, right? Um, gold already did this deal. You know, I, I expect higher, but it certainly has, has a bid. Silver's getting a bid right now. And so what I'm looking at, Tatum, Sam, if, the, if any of these softs, if any of are, are actually farm products start getting a bid, then that is saying, that's saying to me, in a longer run that the dollar is going to get hit. You know, it hasn't got hit oh, now. Absolutely. You know, it hasn't absolutely. got hit, you know. Um, and you get all the key points about the CRB index. What happens if the metals continue to rise, oil continues to rise? Have you looked at corn lately? I mean, I can't believe I messed up get, trying to get long back in May and still didn't even just buy some out of the money puts. It's up 40% over the past like month and a half and yep. it could double the next two months no and, that, and that's when you know you get a real commodity run folks that's that's yeah. that, because you know it's also running teddy um the nitrate stocks you know yes. uh, potash they're running like big time man i mean you know cf just went from 39 dollars to 48 dollars in uh three weeks you know? wow that's a big that's a big rally it's a big rally and that what that means folks is that the potash stocks can charge more money to all the farmers because guess what they're making money too and we know they haven't been making money so is that turn out there and we just don't know it yet you know right. listen man it's always a pleasure you're gonna get me studying this week Thanks, i like guys. it i like it okay you can reach teddy every trading day folks at forex dash trading dash unlock.com that's forex dash trading dash unlock.com teddy you have a great one safe one we look forward to the program next week Thanks, guys. Have Thank a good you. one. You Appreciate too. it. Stay right there, folks. Coming right back.